We will continue by solving some examples for extended objects, that is to say we have a continuous mass distribution. Show that the center of mass of a rod of mass capital M and length capital L lies midway between its ends, assuming the rod has a uniform mass per unit length. And part B says, suppose a rod is non-uniform such that its mass per unit length varies linearly with x according to the expression lambda is equal to alpha x, where alpha is a constant. Find the x-coordinate of the center of mass as a function of capital L. Okay, so here is our uniform rod. Uh, we go to a distance x from the origin on the rod. Uh, we find a differential mass element for a length dx we have a differential mass uh, lambda times dx so that's what we will uh, work with so in the first case when we have a uniform rod uh, we're going to have the mass per unit length lambda equals capital M divided by capital L. So we have a linear mass density lambda which is capital M divided by capital L. So uh, the differential mass element dm uh, will have a mass lambda times dx its length. So we have the length of this mass element, dx. So when we calculate the position of the center of mass, x-coordinate, uh, for the extended object, we have to calculate 1 over capital M integral x dm over the length of the object. So this will be uh, 1 over capital M integral x for dm we substitute lambda dx and this will be 1 over capital M integral from 0 to capital L so I put one end at the origin the other end is at uh, capital L so we have x lambda which is capital M over L uh, dx so these capital M's will cancel out and we will be left with 1 over capital L x squared over 2 as a result of the integral which is to be evaluated between the two endpoints 0 and capital L. So x coordinate of the center of mass will be 1 over 2L x squared evaluated between 0 and L, L squared minus 0. So you can see that the center of mass is located right in the middle. Capital L over 2 is the coordinate of the center of mass. Okay. Now... <clears throat> We're going to look at part B of the problem, where we have a non-uniform mass distribution. Lambda is a function of x. Lambda is equal to alpha x. Okay. So, lambda is equal to alpha x. Therefore, we can calculate the mass of our differential element, dm, to be lambda dx, which is alpha x dx. Now the new location of the center of mass, x coordinate is 1 over capital M, integral x dm, and this will be 1 over capital M, integral over the length 0 to L, x alpha x dx so alpha is coming out it's a constant alpha divided by m is the in uh, multiplied by integral 0 to l 
x squared dx. So this is alpha divided by capital M x cube over 3 when we integrate x squared dx, which is to be evaluated between 0 and L. So this is alpha divided by 3 capital M L cube. So alpha L cube divided by 3M. But I want to know the location exactly, so I, I need to determine what alpha is. So we know that the total mass M, capital M, should be the integral from 0 to L dm. If I add up the contribution from all mass elements, I should be getting the total mass of the rod, which is the integral from 0 to capital L alpha x dx. That is our dm, uh, as you can see here, it's alpha x dx. So this is going to be alpha x squared over 2, which is to be evaluated between 0 and capital L. So we find that alpha capital L squared over 2 must be equal to capital M. So alpha is 2 capital M divided by L square. So if I substitute this into the answer I have found for the x coordinate of the center of mass, it is alpha L cube divided by 3m, where alpha is 2m over L square. So I substitute for alpha 2m over L square. I see that the m's will cancel and I will be left with 1L on top. So my final answer for the position of the center of mass is 2L over 3. Okay, now uh, what we have done here for a one-dimensional uh, extended object uh, where we use dm is equal to lambda ds uh, or lambda dx if s is the x, uh, x coordinate. Uh, lambda is called the linear mass density. If I have a two-dimensional extended object, then dm will be equal to sigma dA, the area, uh, differential area element. Sigma is called the aerial mass density. And dm will be equal to rho dv, where rho is the volume mass density for three-dimensional uh, extended objects. So this is for 3D, this is for 2D, this is for 1D. So we can generalize this uh, to three dimensions. Okay, uh, we're going to look at one more example. Uh, let me summarize what we said here. Uh, so we, we talked about a uniform rod and a non-uniform rod. Uniform rod has uniform mass distribution. Non-uniform rod has a mass uh, that varies with distance uh, from, the, from one end to the other end. So for example, when lambda is equal to alpha x, the mass density becomes alpha times capital L on one end. On the other end, it is zero. So for the uniform case, we have total mass divided by total length giving us the linear mass density and the mass of this region dm, which has a length dx, is lambda dx. So I can calculate x center of mass by 1 over capital M integral x dm, where the integral is over the length of the rod. I find that it's right in the middle. And when I substitute for lambda alpha x, a non-uniform distribution, my mass element has a mass which depends on x, obviously, which is alpha x dx. So using the same uh, definition of the center of mass, 1 over capital M integral x dm over the length, I find that it is alpha l cube over 3m. Now, I cannot have an answer that depends on alpha. I want to know the location. Where is this on this uh, on the x-axis? So it has to be some fraction of L. 
uh, in order to find what alpha is, I notice that if I uh, integrate all mass elements uh, from 0 to L, I should get the total mass, capital M, of the rod, which tells me alpha should be 2M over L squared. Substituting that to X center of mass, I find that it is uh, 2L over 3. And we can generalize this uh, for continuous mass distributions, linear mass density lambda times ds, uh, the differential uh, length gives us uh, the differential mass, sigma dA uh, for two-dimensional objects, sigma times differential area, uh, we get dm, and rho times differential volume dV gives us dm for three-dimensional extended objects. So here is another example. This is now a two-dimensional object. You have been asked to hang a metal sign from a single vertical string. The sign has the triangular shape shown in figure. The bottom of the sign is to be parallel to the ground. So I don't want any rotation. Uh, I want it to be parallel to the ground. At what distance from the left end of the sign should you attach the support string? First of all, remember that if the force is going through the center of mass, it doesn't have a rotation effect. So here we will have uh, the tension uh, on the string uh, and uh, the weight mg pointing down going through the center of mass. Uh, which means there will be no rotation. So the question is, find the location of the center of mass. Okay, so the total mass of this uh, triangular sign, capital M, uh, then we have, a, if this is a uniform uh, mass distribution, we, it doesn't talk about any non-uniformity, so we assume it's uniform. Sigma, the mass density, is uh, the total mass m divided by the total area of our two-dimensional object. You can see that it has one side a, one side b, one side c. C is the hypoth hypotenuse. So the area of this right triangle is ab over 2. So we have total area ab over 2. So 2m, two 2 capital M, divided by ab is my aerial mass density. Okay, and I noticed that uh, in this right triangle, if you calculate tangent theta, it is b over a, so y is a function of x here with this uh, linear relationship. So tangent theta is b over a, therefore y is a function of x, uh, on, on the other side of the sign, it is x tangent theta. So this is going to be x times b over a. So if I want to know the mass of uh, a differential element, I go a distance uh, dx from the origin to find a, a length dx. And then I have a corresponding y here. So the area of this differential uh, element will give me, area times sigma will give me its mass. So dm will be equal to sigma times, what is the area of this rectangle? It is, one side is y, the other side is dx. So it's going to be y times dx. So sigma y dx which is uh, sigma y is um, x times b over a, so b over a times x dx. This is the mass. So this mass dm, if I substitute for sigma 2 capital M divided by ab, will become 2m over ab multiplied with b over ax dx. So it will be, uh, because b's will cancel here, uh, 2m o 2 capital M over a square x dx. Okay, so what is the location of the center of mass, x center of mass? is 1 over capital M, the total mass, 
integral over the area x dm and if I do this integral over x because I have calculated the area in terms of x uh, it will be sufficient so this will be 1 over m uh, multiplied by for dm I substitute 2m over a square x dx integral x goes from 0 to a uh, x square dx uh, so this is going to give me since the capital M's will cancel here 2 over a square x cube over 3 to be evaluated between 0 and a so this is going to become x center of mass is 2a over 3 <clears throat> so uh, why did I not calculate y center of mass because the problem asks me uh, the bottom of the sign is to be parallel to the ground at what distance from the left end what distance from the left end should you attach the support string so a distance of 2a over 3 from the left end is where I should have the support string located so that there will be no rotation effect due to tension and the weight of the sign uh, it will be an equilibrium situation and the bottom surface will be parallel uh, to the ground. Okay, so this was an example for a two-dimensional extended object. Uh, in this case, I have a uniform triangle. Um, it doesn't give me any, any other mass distribution, so by default I assume it's uniform then it's going to have its total mass divided by its total area equal to the aerial mass density. And uh, if you try to find a mass element here, dm, you go a distance x from the left end, uh, a length of dx on the x-axis and the corresponding uh, y uh, will give me the area of this element here. So this area will be equal to dA. So that's the area of the uh, differential area of this uh, part. So uh, sigma times y dx, which is the area of this element, will give me the mass of this element dm. And there is a relationship between y uh, and x y is equal to x tangent theta because it's a right triangle tangent theta is b over a so it is uh, x times b over a so i substitute that here i calculate my dm 2m over a square x dx then i use the definition of center of mass x coordinate 1 over m integral x dm uh, i substitute the result i have found for dm and final answer for the x coordinate of the center of mass is 2a over 3 and that's where you should hang it so that there will be no rotation effect.